Do you feel like you could do it on your own, at least in a simple way, if you wanted to? And it doesn't have to be in a meditation form. You know, you can do it in a standing in line form or in, you know, stuck in traffic or whatever in its simplified form. Yeah, this thing I don't want, I've decided to want. This thing I cling to, I've decided to give. Simple as that. Yeah. And writing on the breath adds to it. Yeah, any thoughts or ideas? I always have difficulty visualizing crowds of people. And I remember seeing one day, um, I don't know what it was, but there were hundreds and hundreds and hun thousands of people at this, um, like, it was probably um, a show of some sort outside, somebody, you know, singing and things like mm -hmm. that. And whenever I think about that, and if I want to think about a load of people, I think about that image, you know, and they, the people just go on and on and on just heads everywhere so it kind of helps <laughs> yeah that's a good idea because we've probably all been to some sort of festival like that where we're right. in the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. helps yeah yeah yeah. yeah lots of people at a time and the other thing if i may yeah yeah is that yeah i have um a family member who has alienated mm. from the family and um i practice tong lin with for her like really often you know um there's no response but just keep the door open yeah. keep the texts going keep pictures going but just like practice tong lien so that if it's not in this life it might be another life that she um can feel the compassion and the loving kindness yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and in the meantime it means that you're less distressed yeah the situation. Mm -hmm. and then you're not yeah. inflicting your distress about the situation on the family members you are in close contact with so mm. i think it, it's got all these layers of benefit where people feel it i think if you've got the door shut on them you know yeah if you're like all right good riddance writing you off they feel it and even if there's been a big blowout family drama fight or just a, a you know quiet drifting away whatever it is if in your heart you are doing what you do, there is a lot more of that chance of them someday knocking on your door and saying, hey, can we have a cuppa, mm. you know? Yeah. So it's it, the it's all layers yeah. of benefits, but it's like, even mm. if it doesn't work, it still works. Mm. And, and when we're thinking about Tonglen, we have to realize like, it's, it's a multi-layered process where you're taking the suffering of others which you can't do in a direct way because you can't take someone else's karma, right? You can only experience the results of causes that you've created. However, by you thinking in that way, you become a very powerful condition. And you as a very powerful condition, then with your karmic connection to that person means that your influence is more than someone else's influence would be. So then you're coming into contact with them as a stronger condition, their causes might awaken for their suffering to ease. So then you wind up sort of taking their suffering, but it's not in such a direct way as the meditation is walking you through. So the meditation is developing this incredible attitude and then you become more and more and more powerful as a condition, even though you're not a cause. And the people you have strong karmic connections with, your influence is more direct. So you know even though it feels kind of like a beautiful fantasy there's an everyday immediate reality to it that i think we underestimate yeah judy go ahead so it's time beauty hi there uh just thinking about uh causes and conditions uh people's all sentient beings various karmas but also us helping them in whatever way we can is also their karma so if we can help a starving human or abused child stop or a woman who's being beaten up or an animal in a slaughterhouse, then if we can do that, it'd be wonderful if we could, then that would also be their karma. They've created the causes and conditions for that, for that help to, be, yeah. to not be abused anymore, to be let out the slaughterhouse and slaughterhouses to get closed down, whatever. Uh, that's what I think. And uh, Yeah, it's true. I, I yeah. think what, what was sometimes we miss is that just the vastness of the karma we've created so someone might have the cause to be helped 
but that doesn't mean it will ripen unless they meet the conditions because they have so many causes, right? And so it's kind of like they have the potentiality, but not the inevitability. Yeah, it's not inevitable that they'll be helped. So how do we bring the fact that they have a cause waiting there latent and it needs to be watered? How do we become the water for people? And that's the sort of nuances of karma that are beyond our realm of comprehension, but we can use common sense to make an educated guess about it. You know, so it's, it's that thing where then you go in as a powerful condition and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And we start to question ourselves and think, am I deficient in my skill set, or am I not being um, effective anymore? And it's just, for some people, they have the seed and you watered it. For some people you watered it, but there was no seed there. And mm -hmm. there's practical things about your skill set and your competencies that we all work on. But I mean, it helps you to not question yourself the times that it doesn't work. Yeah, because yes. if they didn't create the cause, it doesn't matter how powerful a condition you are. You know? Okay. Yeah. Thank so, you. Yeah, many things are true at once. It's karma is really complicated, but the first, the first thing that Tonglen does is settle you down. And then you are already of more benefit to the people around you. And then if you're able to actually affect them in a deeper way, that potentiality is there. But the first benefit is to you, but of course you being peaceful benefits others, the ripple effect. Mm. Yeah, thank you. And, and look, you can also do it in a very pinpointed topic specific real time way that actually can be very useful if you're in pain, physical pain or emotional grief, you don't have to make it huge and expansive and all suffering of all sentient beings, right? At first, you can think my broken leg right now, <laughs> right? Or the fact that I just had my pet die right now. The grief of that, I'm taking on the path right now when it's visceral and real. Sometimes Tonglen can be very effective for working through huge emotions, but only if you've done a little bit of thinking about it beforehand. You know, don't use your first meditation by yourself. Your worst moment usually is not effective unless you've got a lot of mental space, but it really does help with your real-time stuff it is, as it arises. You think, wow, this is not what I wanted, but that's useful, I want it. Does that make sense? So you don't skip the step of this isn't what I wanted. I did not want my pet to die. I did not want to break my leg. I didn't want this, but this not wanting this is useful. I want that. Yeah, don't skip the step. Yeah, Anne, go ahead. Well, I'm not even sure if I practice this properly at all. But the thing is, for me, I should say always, when I do what I do, um, the tightness goes, I get very tight about suffering, people close to me or world suffering, and very I just can't, do it, you know, it's just a very tight feeling. And when I do the Tong Ling, it just completely eases me. And that is the gateway to other things then. And I, for me, that, that pretty much always works. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it overcomes that tendency we have from our conditioning, which is somehow to think I must suffer in response to suffering. Otherwise, people don't know that I care weirdness or... Um, this is painful to watch and so I'm going to have pain and that's what I'm supposed to do because I'm a good person or something and th that is a flawed conditioning that a lot of us have you know and then you watch the news and you see some horrible thing in Ukraine or whatever and and you think oh the pain of those people I shall also feel pain in solidarity for them that is not helping them with their pain is it but your calm relaxed stable state of mind means that there's not that anxiety in your tiny pocket of the world and your area of influence is going to be pervaded by your practice and your peace rather than your grief and your hopelessness. You know, so I think sometimes we feel like pressure to perform suffering or pressure to have suffering when we see suffering. And it, you know, and it's normal and natural, but it's not useful necessarily, you know, but then people might think that we're a bit too detached or disengaged if we're not responding in that sort of normal societal way. So having that kind of sensitivity that knows how to 
be in alignment with the ways of the world without letting the mind go into the intoxicating drama of big emotions. You know, it's, it's a delicate thing, but that tightness that you talk about, I think a lot of us feel that. And it's the tension of, I don't know what to do with this information. I don't know what to do for these people. I don't know what to do with my heart right now because it goes out to them. And just by doing Tonglen, you do release that, that tightness and it helps so much. Yeah, because we all know what happens if you don't kind of address the tightness in the chest is that it oft or in the stomach or wherever you feel it is that it comes out in other ways, sometimes unrelated to the event, you know, and you might snap at your neighbor or something, you know, or just get a headache or, you know, feel kind of vague and not able to focus. So addressing it in real time is really helpful. And Tonglen is your ticket for sure. Yeah, other, other thoughts about Tonglen or any stuck spots or areas of new ideas you want to share? When you do Tonglen, I guess just manage your expectations and, you know, keep, keep kind of a, an observer of your meditation when you do a meditation. And I think that our relationship to emotions is an evolving thing. And to be kind to yourself about what your emotional state is, but to keep coming back to, I don't need to give into the story of it. And part of my attachment mind kind of likes the drama of emotions, even negative emotions. And if I want to be a mature practitioner on the path, I need to stop that nonsense. Which is not to say don't feel what you're feeling, but there's a difference between feeling what you're feeling and giving in and embellishing and going off on a whole story with it. Do you know the difference? Like if you let an emotion take its course in a natural way without feeding it and without suppressing it, it rolls through fairly quickly. Yeah, one to five minutes, the peak of a strong emotion. Yeah, even neuroscience and you know these uh, new studies and collaborations with Buddhism will confirm a lot of that, like the heightened, escalated, like strong anger, strong attachment, strong grief, when it's like in the peak agitated state, it's like one to five minutes in its natural form. But if you feed it, it will last longer. Or if you suppress it, it'll come out in other ways. So to be kind of brave with it, to just let it roll through like a wave crashing over you and just watch it. You don't have to agree with it or disagree with it. Just watch it roll through. Yeah. And then if you feel mental space at Tonglen. There's a lot of verses in the text about ways to do Tonglen or things to do Tonglen for. Um, then the other theme is a lot about trample the head of the demoness conception of self. Trample. Yes, <laughs> it's all rather violent. And to remember that again and again, we're talking about something that is additional to mind that is not us. So trample, trample, you're clearly identifying the enemy, which is the negative states of mind. Yeah, you're not trampling on yourself, your good heart or anything about you in that way. You're trampling on this very specific thing, self-grasping and self-cherishing. Yeah. So the, so the words are, you know, they're full on. They're really full on when you read the text and talking about, you know, this uh, slaying this and slashing that and all these things that you see in these texts. Remember that this is spoken to an Indian and a Tibetan audience, which think about, you know, which have different conditioning than we have had. So they hear it with different ears. So we need to always remember the audience as well. <laughs>